Hello, delighted to be joined by the best-selling author of the Thor novels and many standalones. It's Mr. Mark Billingham. Thank Hello, you. Luca. Thank you for joining us. You are joining us to give us your top five songs about crime. I am, and and as you would expect, it's a list that's heavily influenced uh, <laughs> by the kind of stuff we play uh, in the fun-loving crime writers. At least a couple of them. At least a couple of them. Always love crime about uh, songs about crime and. The weird thing is, I'll go straight in with my number one choice, and this is, this is a song which not many people will know. Um, it's a song called I Did What I Did for Maria by Tony Christie. And you'll know it if you hear it, and you'll know that amazing voice. And the reason I'm picking that is it's the first single I ever bought. Wow. I ever back in 1971 when I was 10. And uh, I bought this because probably at the time, I loved his voice, and it's got these fantastic mariachi horns. Bah, 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 bah. And I thought, oh, well, that's a cool song, and I bought it. And then one day I actually sat and listened to the lyrics and it's the darkest song. It's a song about somebody who is seeking to kill the man who raped and murdered his wife. And I've always wondered, did something, even, even at the age of 10, did something kind of seep into my head and think, I really love this dark story? You know, I've always loved songs that tell stories, you know, within the, within the lyrics. And this is just the darkest crime story you could imagine and uh so yeah that's number one i mean uh, tony christie's not the guy that you go to straight away no imagine being that kind of he did amarillo didn't he of course he did amarillo <laughs> i mean and yeah and absolutely he wouldn't be you know the sort of names i'm going to get to the names you'd imagine i'm going to get yeah. to you wouldn't think tony christie welsh a welshman would be uh, would be the first one on the list but yeah he had a great voice tony probably still does have a great voice yeah. uh but yeah this is the first song i ever bought I won't tell you what the first song I ever bought was. Yes, you will. <laughs> well, it's weird because the first the first single I bought wasn't until I was very late on because I used to just tape it all off the radio because it's like you know growing up with not money, much money. Uh, but the first album I ever I ever bought was with Birthday Money, and that was Queen Live at Wembley, nineteen eighty six, on on LP on vinyl. Uh, but the first CD single I ever bought CD single. Yes, yes. <sighs> You it was a child. It was, I think it was 96, no, it would be 97, around 97, 98, and it, would, it was, uh, do you know what I mean by Oasis? I, I didn't even know CD singles were a thing. You were four quid. <laughs> I think my Tony Christie single was about 40 pence. Yeah. <laughs> but that, that, that's the thing is, I was, like, whenever anyone asks about, like, first single you ever bought, I can't really answer it because I didn't buy my first single until I was 14, 15. Yeah. yeah, but the first album that was a good album to buy first because it was a double one, so I got double my money's worth. Very good. I got Very it from good. our price records in Liverpool. <laughs> well, okay, number two, the second song on my list is is by an artist you'd expect to be on that on this list, and that's Hank Williams. Um, so many of his actually not not too many of them are about crime, but they're all about you know darkness and heartbreak and all the great stuff that makes country music the best music of all time. Um, and this is a song called I Never Get Out of This World Alive. It's a song we do uh, in the Fun Loving Crime Writers and it's a song that found its way into the set because we're forever getting asked at crime conventions what noir is. What does noir mean? And just the title of this song, I'll Never Get Out of This World Alive, that's pretty much what noir is. So you've got Hank Williams dead at 29 in the, in the back of a Cadillac on New Year's Eve, leaving this incredible body of work behind, these incredible songs behind. Um, it's, you know, it's probably the first song I ever learned to play on guitar, uh, probably because it genuinely only does have three chords and the truth. Um, and yeah, that has to be on the list, Hank. Yeah, I, I knew of, I obviously knew Hank Williams and knew because my dad would play him when I was a kid and stuff like that. So like, I, he was always good at giving me those songs to listen to when I, and growing up. So I didn't just listen to Oasis and Britney. Um, but it was, <laughs> but it was. I didn't know until I think you told me a couple of years ago that he died at twenty nine, and I can't believe that body of work. Before well, 20, it makes you feel a bit, you know, like how if he can do, how can I have? What was I doing by twenty nine? Well, all the all the greats. I mean, you look at what Paul McCartney had, had uh, you know, what he'd achieved by the age of twenty six. It's quite frightening. Um, but you say body, the interesting thing is, well, not interesting, it's horrible, but, when the, but the, uh, the pathologist who carried out the, the post-mortem on Hank Williams' body thought, sort of, thought it was the body of a man in his 50s. Uh, he, had, he had a life, shall we yeah. say. Uh, was pretty lucky to have made it to 29. But like you say, amazing body work.
Yeah, 29. God. I hadn't even started writing by 29. <laughs> Waste of my life. <laughs> okay, number three. All right, another, number three, another great story. Uh, this is a song called Ode to Billy Joe by Bobby Gentry. And she was an amazing, I mean, she in herself is an amazing woman. I don't, more people should know about Bobby Gentry, who was this, she wrote her own songs and did a lot of production on her own songs and was a huge star and then went, I'm done, and just disappeared. To this day, people don't really know where Bobby Gentry is. She hasn't given an interview for decades. She just walked away. She walked away from it all at the height of her fame. Really, really interesting. Um, but this is one of those songs, one of the few songs we've made into a movie, in fact, a really ter truly terrible movie. If you ever see it one day when you flick channel surfing, don't watch. Um, but it's just this sort of gothic, beautiful gothic slice of, of kind of, you know, Southern America. Uh, and at the heart is this mystery of exactly what happened. What is Billy Joe, you know, why did Billy Joe jump off the Tallahatchie Bridge? Why is the, the, the woman singing the song? What, what, you know, what did she throw into the muddy water? All that stuff. There's so many questions. I mean, we think we know what the answers are and they're really, really dark. But it's a beautiful song. Number four. Number four, so The Mercy Seat by Nick Cave. Um, now, I actually, I actually prefer the Johnny Cash version of this, but because Johnny Cash is coming up, um, I've gone for the original uh, Nick Cave song about, you know, facing the electric chair. I mean, and just every word of it just makes the hairs on the back of your neck stand up. And I could have picked any one of, any one of the songs from his whole album, Murder Ballads, which is just fantastic. But yeah, this is a very, very dark, ultra crimey song. If you want to, because you were saying before about when we get asked about noir, I think we should just hold up a picture of Nick Cave. Yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It also does this brilliant thing lyrically by spending the whole song talking about how horrendous what's about to happen to him is, and of course it is, and he's going, I didn't do it, I didn't do it, and then right at the end goes, yeah, okay, I did. Yeah. Which is good. I do love a twist in a song. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's uh, yeah, I think it's another one of those where it is, it, the crowd, best crowd songs are telling stories, yeah. uh, and I think Nick Cave does that really well on that song. I mean, it, it, I, I think it's, I think it's true of any song, though. I think all the best songs tell stories. So yeah. I agree. They're, they're the songs that I'm always drawn to, always. Yeah. Um, so I said we'd have some Johnny Cash. Obviously, we got Johnny Cash. What's the greatest prison song of all time? <laughs> it's uh, it's false and prison blues. How can you not? How can you not have a song that has lines in it like "I shot a man in Reno just to watch him die"? Um, and and you know Johnny Cash never did any hard prison time. Plenty of those singers do, but he didn't. He obviously did some great shows in prisons, but he was never a prisoner himself. But you believe it. He has one of those voices, Johnny Cash, where it just feels like he's lived that life. Um, I just love this song. Yeah, uh, I mean that it's that line for me. That line is one of the, I I will contend is one of the greatest lines <laughs> lyrics. Yeah. It's just to watch him die is that I you know I've seen it kind of duplicated elsewhere, but it's never as simple as that. I shot a man in Reno just to watch just him to die. watch him die. And I wonder how many how many different places he thought of. You know, it's just Reno just fits so well. You know, <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't work in this country, would it? No, <laughs> I shot a man in Leicester just to watch. It's not <laughs> not the same, is it? No. I'm sure it's happened, but you know. Um, so I said I was doing top five. I'm doing I'm doing six. I'm going to sneak a sixth one in. I'm going to sneak a six in because I've got to have a song that has the word detectives in the title, haven't I, Luca? Yeah. So watching the detectives by Elvis Costello, who is the greatest singer songwriter of his generation. You can argue with me, but you're wrong. Um, and this actually really, it really isn't a song about crime. It's a song about detectives. It's not even actually a song about detectives. It's a song about somebody who is getting really frustrated that the woman he's in lust with won't pay him enough attention because she's obsessed with watching old detective movies. That's really what the song's about. Um, but it has this incredible atmosphere and this incredible sort of noirish guitar sound on it. And it's called Watching the Detectives, and it has to be on the list. Do you think we'll always have that in the set, that song? For the fun uh, in the fun loving crime writer set, I don't know. It was certainly the first song. It was probably the first song we all thought of, yeah. um, just because of the title. And obviously, I, I, I was desperate to crowbar it into the set because I'm such an Elvis Costello fan. I don't know if I mean, you know, hopefully we'll keep revolving the songs we play because there's no shortage of songs about crime. Yeah. I mean, this could have been top hundred songs about crime, <laughs> and people are always suggesting them to the band, aren't they? Oh, you should yeah. play this and you should play that. Our only rule, as you know, is that it should be songs that people know. Yeah, um, and this was one of one of Costello's biggest hits. Somebody knows it, and, I, and we always try and do something, you know, that's 
because we, we know we do we, we like to provide a good time this is a bit of a one of the slower songs in the set it is but i think this is also one of our like kind of calling cards now we've been it's doing a signature, this signature tune signature tune <laughs> that's what you've always wanted as an elvis costello tune to be your signature tune of course it is and i dream of the day that we're playing it and he comes on stage and plays it with us which Wonder. might possibly feasibly have happened this year in Edinburgh if, <laughs> if Edinburgh hadn't been cancelled. Oh, no. It was either that or Lily the Pink. Yeah. <laughs> that, too, that too would be a great moment. <laughs> Thank you, Mark, for your choice. My pleasure. My pleasure. 